Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, host of the Open Line Garden Show and certified horticulturalist for Rittenhouse.ca. Today we're going to take a look at diagnostic tools for the home gardener and the professional. The first ones we're going to take a look at are pH meters. We carry two, the consumer model, which has a pH range of 3 to 8, and the professional model, which has a range of 3.5 to 8. Now, just a quick review. Seven is neutral soil, from seven to eight is, is alkaline, and from seven and below is acidic. Now, both have the same technologies inside, and both are susceptible, like all delicate instruments, being dropped or rough handled, so please don't do that. If you drop them, they're gone, they're useless. I will say this, that the professional unit in most cases can be recalibrated, the consumer unit cannot, it has to be replaced. The other difference here is the fact that it has a button. This little magic button changes the professional unit from a pH meter to a moisture meter. It has a scale of, of course, zero to 100, okay? And you have to interpret, like all moisture meters, the relative reading. Okay. The professional also comes in a leatherette pouch and each comes with a couple of cleaning film. I would also recommend that if you buy one of these, you get an extra package of the cleaner films. Now, what you do is you never touch the metal probes on either unit. Okay. If they get dirt on them because you've got them in the ground, etc. When you clean them, simply take a clean, dry rag and get rid of the excess. Now, that's all you're getting rid of is the excess. They don't have batteries, but they do work on the conductivity in the soil. As a result, they pick up a molecular barrier on the metal sheets of each of these probes. So therefore, it is very important that you clean them. You take the dull side of the sheet and you simply rub and clean. This should be done after each and every use or extended use to keep their accuracy up. Now when you put them in the ground, you have to make sure that the metal probes are covered completely. You let them sit there and once they've sat there for a short period of time, sometimes anywhere from a minute to three minutes, the needle will have settled. That is your accurate reading. It's very important you leave them there for that. Now, should you have to uh, do a soil test of pH below the depth that you have here. You'll take a trowel, you'll simply dig the hole and put the pH meter in the bottom of the hole in the undisturbed soil. It's very important that it's undisturbed soil. And that will give you the reading of that level of the soil as well. So it's important that you realize that that's what you have to do in order to get an accurate pH of the soil in that area. Now, we mentioned moisture. There is another moisture meter, and this one is, of course, a longer probe. It measures everything down at this tip. So it goes in and it measures the moisture at the level of the tip. So you can push it in, down, deeper, 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 go from pot to pot to pot. Like all these instruments, they should not be left in the soil or in the pot for any extended period of time. It will help to corrode the actual tips and that would make them extremely inaccurate. Now, with this pH meter, I'm sorry, with this moisture meter, uh, you have a battery, which you have to replace every once in a while. You'll notice that when it doesn't move, it's time to replace the dead battery. But this moisture meter has to be set. So you take your perfect soil, by that a pot of soil with the accurate amount of moisture that you want, or the garden soil that's got the perfect amount of moisture in it. You turn around and take out this little black plug, okay? You take a standard slot screwdriver and inside there's a little screw. You take and you turn the screw until the dial reads 5. Okay? Once it's read 5, you leave the setting there 
and you put the little black plug in. And from then on, this is an accurate device for the perfect moisture, not too wet and not too dry. So when you go and put it in and use it the next time, it will read and read accurately for your garden. Now temperature is a very important thing in a garden. Um, we have two thermometers. These are soil thermometers. These are not air thermometers. A lot of what activity that goes on in our garden is determined more by soil temperature than by the air temperature. We're talking about uh, uptake of nutrients, moisture, and of course it affects germination of seed and even slightly pH. Now, this particular uh, thermometer has a range from 20 to 180 degrees. You simply go in, put it to the depth of the soil that you wish to measure the temperature of, and so let it sit. It will jump up a little bit and then settle. Usually takes about a minute. The temperature that we find is very critical to most gardeners, particularly in turf, is the temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, crabgrass and grass seed and weed seeds start to germinate. So you need to know when to go and put uh, the soil and do your work and when to expect the germination of grass seed. Why seed before it can actually germinate and the birds just sit there and eat it. The other thing is that with crabgrass germinating at that temperature, you want to put some of the preventers down before it reaches that temperature to get the maximum kill. So temperature is actually quite important. The other one is this, this is actually a compost thermometer. It's supposed to go into the center of the pile and measure the temperature in the middle of the pile. Why? In a composter, when your temperature reaches 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it's time to turn the pile and make it active again. But I like this one because I don't have to bend over, put it into the soil to the depth, and it measures temperatures from zero degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and I don't have to bend over as much. This is the one I own. Now, if you're curious about the soil and you don't want to dig it up, you want to take a profile of your soil, then what you want to do is you take a soil probe. This is a eight inch soil probe, that's the length, but it does a five inch core. Now, you push it down, you pull up, and you'll have a core of soil that you can look at for content and moisture. It's important that you realize that that is what you're really looking at here. Now, if you had to go deeper, you would take your trowel again, dig your hole, make sure that it's large enough to get the handle down and that you're uh, undisturbed because you don't want disturbed soil in there, do it again, okay? Pull it up and analyze the soil by sight. You can do core samples like this and send them off to the lab or use that core to actually use your own home test soil kit as well. I own the big probe because it does an eight inch depth of core, okay, even though it's 20 inches long, but it's also wider, so it gives me a wider profile to look at and to show people. That's why I like this one in particular. Same thing happens. If I want to go deeper than the eight inches, then I take my trowel, okay, and I dig down. Or what I have done, and this only works if your soil is decent, you go in, you pull out, take your first core, take a look at it, take it out, go down the same hole again, and usually about eight inches, right? And then you'll get your second core, you can analyze that, pull it out, and go down the third time down the same hole, all the way to the handle. And what you'll get is usually about that much of a second or third core, actually. So use that if you need to go and do that. I've actually had to do that for one customer who but did not believe that he had the absolute perfect soil. Always believed that he had terrible soil, and yet he had topsoil, the absolute perfect topsoil, down 20 inches, and I think I could have gone down even deeper. If you'd like to see these tools and other great diagnostic tools, please go to our website, www.rittenhouse.ca.